So in this video, I'm just going to go over how we design our Ceric crowns for implant restorations. Um, it will vary a little bit from uh, case to case, of course, and if we're doing a split restoration where there's actually a separate custom abutment and crown, uh, that would it will add a couple steps, but that's not the case in this one. I want to show a pretty simple example. And uh, also, just to note, I don't include the administration phase in this video. Um, that's just where you're going to enter what you're scanning, whether what kind of implant system it is, uh, whether you're scanning a tie base or a scan post. In the video I'm doing, it's just a tie base with little scan caps on top of it. If you struggle with that and you need a higher scan cap, then you can go with the scan uh, scan body selection. But anyway, that's uh, in the, the administration phase, just like making an inner crown. Just want to let you know that. Other than that, um, that's, that's it. So we start each case with a preoperative model where we've scanned the edentulous area, the proximal surfaces, and now I just copy that over into the scan body model uh, catalog itself. And now I'm going to cut out the area where I know the scan body is going to be popping through. Be aware, more is better, meaning cut away as much as you need. Don't underdo it. A lot of times I'll go right up some, from the proximal surface to the proximal surface. You don't need that data in this scan, and we don't want there to be an overlap of the pre-existing tissue with where the scan bodies are popping out. If that happens, you'll notice that they disappear when you go to find your implants in the actual design process. So if they disappear, that means go back, cut out a little more, and rescan. Okay, so I found out that I, there's a couple little things I didn't like. I want to add a little bit. And notice that my scanning is really fast here. I, this video is at two times speed. I'm uh, not trying to show you how fast this moves. I just don't want to bore you by uh, showing you a full length 15-minute uh, video. And instead, I'm trying to make this about five minutes. So right now, I'm saving. And I save often before I progress forward. That's just a habit in my office. And so now it's loading. And this start, this was definitely the slowest process. Um, and so, of course, I've sped this up quite a bit. Uh, if you're a Syracuse, you know that this, this can take a little while. But now it is finishing up, and here come the models. So uh, ideally, the bite relation is dialed in, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to align the uh, model axis. Uh, sometimes it does it for you and it gets, it's pretty good, but I like to refine it um, uh, if when necessary. Okay, so we are now ready to click, and we're just going to double click on each one, making sure at the bottom that you're clicking the correct one. You don't want to click them out of place, but you just click the, the little peak of the pyramid there, and then it's going to it's going to line up. The software is going to recognize it. So now. It is giving me a, an initial uh, plan, and this space has been uh, edentulous for quite some time. So, um, you know, the space isn't, you know, normal premolar molar size, but it's pretty close. So, uh, I'm actually going to leave these dimensions pretty much uh, as is. Um, I actually left the computer right there, and I'm picking up re-recording at this point, and um, came back later to actually the designs to finish this video up. So. The initial plans are pretty good from an occlusal perspective, but they tend to be pretty bulky at the gingival area. So I'm going to hide the margin, the the uh, model itself, and I turn on the form smooth tool, and I turn up the strength pretty high. And if you notice, I keep the mouse on the right side of it because that's where it's the most effective. If it's like sort of just off the screen, and I'm just smoothing that back. And I don't care if I'm showing blue because the software later won't allow that to to happen. Essentially, it requires. Uh, it's a new thing in the software, which when we first had it happen, it was kind of annoying. It forced us to make it thicker. But now I have sort of embraced that because now I just don't worry about it. I make it as thin as I want to, and I know the software is always going to bulk it up for strength in that area. So. Um, so yeah, so now on this uh, molar, doing the same thing, I'm going to make it, you know, emerge to the point where it's going to be contact with the tissue, and these aren't super deep implants, this patient doesn't have real thick tissue, so I'm going to make it a little more bowl-shaped, uh, bowl if you will, as opposed to, you know, super, uh, you know, hourglassed or trumpet-shaped, uh, I like that, that's my typical, you know, approach is to really make it hourglassed, but again, these aren't super deep, they are subcrestal. Um, but uh, the tissue itself also isn't real thick. And in the end, if I need to, I can always go back and carve them back a bit if I find that the tissue has bulked up a bit. 
and I did reflect the tissue to the buckle, allowing it to uh, fill in. So we'll see what we get. But again, I'd rather have it slightly over contoured and just take a burr, a, fl um, a football diamond, and sort of in re indent that, polish it up, and we'll be good to go. Um, but other than that, uh, so I am trying to make sure that the contacts here between these two teeth is, is as flat as possible because these are going to be screw-retained crowns. I am not splitting these. I very, very, really split, especially in the posterior, particularly with guided implant placement. You can see those implants are pretty parallel. Are they perfect? No, but they're pretty, I'm pretty happy with them. So um, <clears throat> in this case, I did scan just the tie bases themselves with scan caps because I'm using an elevated tie base, a 1.8 millimeter elevated tie base, and that's fine with me. If you use a scan post uh, that brings it up even higher, you just have to make sure at the beginning of the software and the administrative phase that you tell it that. Otherwise, the height will be slightly off. So once again, I'm just checking the interproximal embrasure there and just trying to maybe lengthen this contact just a touch. I don't want real broad contacts, and I think that I'll get a little bit of papilla formation. Um, studies will show that it's about um, three millimeters from the crest of bone between implants to where we will have uh, a papilla form. So, um, you know... Uh, I think you know if some you can occasionally get more than that, but that's what you got to aim for. So that's where I'm looking at right here, and I've got this tiny little embrasure. I think that'll get a little bit of tissue growth, and we'll be good to go. So there we go. Got nice parallel contacts. That's no different than any other crown, you know, and par uh, parallel crown setup. And that's it. I hope that helps.